Good morning, artists, and welcome to the studio. My name is Allison Jensen, and I am the owner of Orange Easel School of Art here in downtown Liberty, Missouri. As you can tell, our studio is really, really quiet today. The open sign is still in the lobby, the TV isn't on, and I'm the only one here. So this happens to be one of our quiet weeks where many of our three times a month classes are not meeting this week. It's an off week. And our four times a month classes are still meeting, but those are our evening classes. So it's a quiet day in the studio, and I've got a really cool fall leaf tutorial here because we're doing a whole series of leaf videos, and I made these little pretties. Aren't those pretty? And I've got them hung up in the studio window, and I want to show you how to make those. And so I'm not going to do the video up here today. I'm actually going to do it back in my classroom. So walk with me as I head back. This is down the hallway. We're going down to the preschool classroom because I already have everything all set up in here. So let's see if I can put you down. Isn't that cute? I did those lights um, beginning of this year and I'm just absolutely in love with them. I'm trying to figure out where else in the studio I can put fairy lights. Okay, let's have a seat. All right, this is where we're gonna work and I'll explain to you what I have set up for us today. I've got a griddle. We're going to be doing some crayon melting in order to get the color onto our leaves. We've done this before with you, so if you've seen the griddle art tutorial, this won't be too new for you. I do have a template that I went ahead and drew up for myself. If you watched our watercolor video on Monday, you notice I freehanded all the leaves with the paint. Well, this time I wanted to go ahead and have them already drawn out because I did it um, yesterday without drawing it, and it was hard to get those leaf shapes. So I went ahead and drew them out in just a, a real fine point ink pen. And I will, I've got an extra copy of this. This is actually a copy I ran through the printer, but I'll make a PDF of this and put it on a blog post and link it to the YouTube. So if you don't wanna draw your own leaves, you can use mine. Sound good? All right, so I'm gonna put this on the griddle. Down it goes. The griddle that I have, my griddle is used only for art, okay? So it is a typical flat top pancake griddle. It is on its lowest setting. Um, so it's just on warm. You notice I didn't put anything down to protect the surface of my griddle because I won't be making pancakes later on it. If you are, if you're using the griddle at home that you used to cook food on, what I would recommend from personal experience is when your griddle is still cold, cover that sucker with aluminum foil as best you can, like maybe even double layer it so that way none of this crayon wax gets on your griddle, right? So cover it with aluminum foil just to protect the surface and then make your art on top of it. So you can just take that aluminum foil off and throw it away when you're done. No crayon wax on the pancakes. All right. Or you go to the thrift store and buy yourself a griddle that you can just use for art. That's what I did. After enough complaints of the hubby, that's what I did. All right, so I've got my sheet of paper just on the griddle. It's a great project for kids. We did this with preschoolers yesterday. So um, I'll talk to you a little bit about how to cue the preschoolers because they've obviously they can't put their hands down on the griddle. They don't want to touch the paper because it is warm. Um, and you want to have a whole bunch of crayons. So all my crayons are over here to the side. And I'm going to decorate. I'm going to color these leaves in with my crayons. Let's pull nice and close and tip the camera down so you can see what I'm doing, right? You see that I had a little bit of wax here on my griddle from the last one, but that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. I've got an orange crayon. That's what we're going to start with. Let's make this leaf an orange and green one, shall we? Now, I put the crayon down and you'll see it instantly start to melt and I can go all the way around my leaf. I'm not too worried about keeping it into the lines because I'm going to end up cutting these out anyway. So I don't need to stay inside my lines. I just want to make sure I get enough really good color inside the leaves. And what's cool about doing this with crayons on the griddle is it's almost like you are painting them because the crayon, you know, the wax, it melts into paint. So here I can put some green in the middle of my leaf. And then if I kind of run into the orange a little bit, I can mix these two things together, which is so fun. So go back to my orange and let's mix together that, those two colors. Um, and I had a little tool here somewhere and I left it down. I wanted to show you something really cool. Let me go grab it. Put my mic down. All right. I'm back. Hope you didn't go anywhere. So I've got a paintbrush and it's just the back end of the paintbrush that I'm going to use. I'm going to use it to move the wax because it stays wet as long as it's on this griddle. And so if I take this and I follow the veins, right, in my leaf, I can actually do a little bit of swirling. You could use a toothpick, you could use a wooden skewer. I just, I'm in my art room and I had a paintbrush. So if I pull this 
green out to the side, I get those veins in my leaf, which is kind of a fun thing. So what I'm trying to simulate here is that, that stage in those leaves, you know, when they're kind of changing, um, you know, very rarely are they all one color. We've usually got more than one thing going on. This is a fun little citron color. And then let's use some brown. That's what color, the leaves that are falling at my house right now, they are brown and yellow. So if I put a little bit of brown here at the base, right, and up the middle a little bit, and then I can take the back point of my paintbrush again and just kind of pull it. Um, and I mean, you could draw circles if you wanted to, but I'm just trying to kind of follow the shape of the leaf. So if you do this with kids, um, this is a really fun one. You want to make sure they don't put their hand down on there. That would hurt, right? If you've got really, really young ones, we usually sit a parent right beside them, and the parent will just hold their hand under their hand. It's almost like having a bracer to keep it from setting down onto the griddle. Um, and really, I mean, if you just touch it, it doesn't burn it, but it sure doesn't. It, and it's noticeably hot. Um, and the edges here on this griddle is hot too, so you want to be really careful. But we do this, like I said, we do this with really young ones. We, we do this with threes and fours and fives um, with one-on-one -on -one supervision, of course, just to make sure that nobody gets injured. All right, let's peel a little bit of a yellow crayon. If you've got crayon peelers at home, this is, this is a good job for them. So we peel a yellow crayon, and let's do this one up here. So I'm going to color this one yellow. This is going to be a yellow and, and red leaf. All right, like I said, not trying to stay in the middle. Don't really care if I stay inside my lines because... I'm gonna end up cutting this out anyway. If you have kids that have never done this before, one of their tendencies is going to be to color really, really fast, right? So they can't do that. They gotta move their crayon pretty slowly. Otherwise, we end up with where the paper actually moves on the griddle. Um, and then their first instinct is to then hold the paper still, and then they burn themselves. So put one hand behind the back if you need to, tie it to the table, whatever you need to do so that they don't use this hand to hold it still. And then we usually tell them, to go ahead and go as slow as they can because um, we got to give that wax time to melt. All right, so there's a really fun one. That's kind of a rainbow-ish leaf. It's got lots of different colors on it. Super fun. Let's use my, my pencil. We'll pull this way for my paintbrush. Pull some of that red into the orange. I love making decorations, seasonal decorations for the house. And, and if you make art that can then double as decorations, I feel like um, you kind of as a parent, kind of win the day, right? Because you have all these art projects that the kids want to make, and what in the world do you do with them? Well, here is a great way to enjoy them seasonally, and then, you know, when they've run their course, they, they can go in the special circle file. Okay, right up here, let's do a, um, remember on the watercolor one, we did like a burning bush. Let's do that one. So we've got a green one. And then we're going to put some really deep red in it. Let's see if I can find a red that's going to show up. This one was kind of a pinky red. Some of your crayons are going to melt better than others. And I honestly, like, I think Crayola melts the best. I think sometimes the, the off-brand, like the Rose Art, not so much. So, so that one's, that's hard to tell in the, in, the, in the camera. But that one's a red one with green. So that one's a burning bush. And then one more. And then we'll go ahead and cut these out. I love doing this too because there's no dry time. So you'll have kids that'll say, when is it dry? And it doesn't really dry, it just cools down. And when it cools down, um, you know, the wax changes back to a solid and, and you're good to, to cut it and touch it and move it around and manipulate it. Um, so the quote unquote dry time is super fast with these. That's a fun one. It's just got a little bit of green and yellow and, and brown there. I didn't do the stems on this one. My other one, I did stems. Now, you don't have to cut these out. If you just did these, you could then color the background on them, and it could just be a picture. You could just make a leaf picture, which is fun. Or um, you can do what I'm going to do, which I'm going to cut them out and stick them into my window. I'm using the paintbrush to lift this off the griddle so I don't have to stick my fingers in it. And I'll pull this off, and I'll back up my camera, and we'll show you what this looks like. It looks pretty. You see how the light shines through them? So if we turn it, let's see, I'm gonna look up at the lights. Can you see how pretty they are with the light shining through? That's why they work as window clings. Um, so that wax, because it melts through the paper, it almost turns the paper into like a wax paper and it makes it kind of a little bit see-through. So it works really well. So we're gonna cut these out because it is already dry enough to go ahead and cut. Um, and then I will show you how to stick them onto the windows. How's that sound? Did, if anybody joined us for our, where did I put my scissors? 
Found them. If anybody joined us for one of our summer series where we did like a stained glass, right? A DIY faux stained glass. Um, you will know how we're going to stick this in here. I got to show you something too. Look, those of you who were there for that video, look, it's still in my window. <laughs> it's just like at home. Decor doesn't change. No, but that thing has stuck in the window since I made that video, which is crazy. All right. So I don't think these are going to hold up quite as, as long as that with our little oil trick, but that's, that's because they're heavier, right? Um, okay, so we cut these out. They cut really easy, and they make just beautiful window clings. You can stay on the, the lines, or you can go a little bit out of them. This is a great cutting practice for kids. I wouldn't stress too much about making them perfect. Pick a window in your house that you can decorate. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the front window by the door. Maybe it's not the front window. Maybe you want to put it like somewhere towards the back of the house. Whatever. But it, wouldn't it be fun to have a window that you always have decorated seasonally with art? Um, and you can start that tradition here with these leaves. I'm going to cut this one out and then I'm going to hold this one up so you can see what it looks like. So this is our yellow and brown one that we did. Like I said. Isn't that cool? It's already dry and the light shines through it. Let's see. Can I show you how pretty it is? So cool. All right. So I'll go show you how to hang this up. How's that? We'll bring this one too. We'll bring both of them. Two of them. We're kind of moving all over the studio today. We can't usually do that because there's usually all sorts of people here. All right. Whoops. Where'd you go? Whoop. Sorry. Hang on. Come back. How do I turn my camera around? <laughs> there you are. Okay. So these are my leaves. For some reason, I have the oil over here. We're going to use just a plain old cooking oil, and I've got a little dish of it already poured in. And all I have to do, I'm using my finger. Um, on the other ones, I used a cotton ball, but my cotton ball seems to have disappeared, and I won't make you hang around with me while I go find it. Okay, so we rubbed a little bit of oil on the back of that one. Let's rub a little bit of oil on the back of this one. This is how we made those window clings stick, too. It's nice to be able to stick things without having to put adhesive on it. If you didn't want to do the oil, you could certainly do like clear contact paper and just put it right over the top. Um, but since since we have this and we can do it this way. All right, so this, turn my camera around so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to put it right here. And all you got to do is get a nice seal between the window and that oil. So just kind of push it down and it sticks. And it's got a little bit of finger smudges because, of course, my fingers have oil on them. But nothing that a little Windex on a paper towel wouldn't take care of. So let's stick up the other one. Let's see. Here, i got to make sure I turn it around so you can see. This one, let's pretend it's falling. It's falling down there. Right there. Boom. Whoops. Get in there. Got to get the air kind of squished out so it sticks on. Pretty cool, right? So now I've got falling leaves in my window. We may do that for Open Studio this Saturday and see if we can get that whole window covered in falling leaves. I know when we did it this summer with the stained glass, somebody had some concerns about the cleaning. It's just cooking oil. So um, if Windex doesn't cut it to take it off, you know, so when you want to like clean your window and you don't have want leaves on there anymore, if Windex doesn't take it off, a little bit of soap and water, it'll cut through that oil and that grease that's on the window, and then, then you can Windex it clear. So nothing permanent, nothing that's going to destroy your windows, but it sure is a fun temporary wall decoration or window decoration. All right, that's all I got. So I did, I lost it, but I did actually find a leaf this morning, you guys. I had to go to school and drop off picture money for my kids because it's picture day and they didn't have their envelopes with their money in it. So I had to go up there today and I was walking through the parking lot and there was actually a great big, and I brought it and I've lost it, great big red and yellow leaf. I was so excited. So um, I'm excited soon. I will be get to walk to work and um, I will collect all sorts of leaves and then we'll talk about what we can do to preserve all those beautiful colors and crafts and arts that we can do with those fall leaves while they're here. All right, so not much longer. Until then, we'll just keep making up our own, right? All right, you guys have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will chat with you again on Friday. Later, guys.